Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my Code to Care series. I just wanted to spend a couple minutes and talk about how generative AI models are trained. Uh, now, you may know how old-fashioned kind of tabular machine learning uh, models are trained. I'll just remind you of that and then just talk about the difference with, uh, with Gen AI. So a um, tabular model, if you picture a table here, each row in the table is something that you want to train on, like uh, patient appointments or, um, you know, those, those uh, a patient clinical condition or a financial transaction or something like that. And each of these um, rows has a bunch of features. And then at the end, there's a label, uh, often like a yes, no question. Did this patient show up for their appointment? Will they get diabetes in the next year? Is this financial transaction fraud? You know, those kinds of uh, things. And you basically have a human label this data or the data is labeled in some way. Uh, and then you train a machine learning model to recognize a pattern between the features and this label. Uh, and then you could put more things like it, more patients, more transactions, more emails, whatever you're domain is through the model to get a prediction on that uh, label. Now, uh, Gen AI models aren't trained like this at all. Um, there's actually three different training opportunities uh, with a Gen AI model. And let me just cover those briefly, and then I'll do a few uh, deeper dive videos to, uh, to elaborate. There are really three different opportunities to train a Gen AI uh, model. So, Gen AI. The first is called pre-training. And what this, you get the model pre-trained. If you get it from OpenAI or from Google or from Claude AI or uh, any of these open source models, they've been pre-trained. And they've been trained on nearly kind of the entire Wikipedia, the entire internet, all the text and language that these companies can find in the public domain, they're going to train their model on. So you don't do that you get the models pre-trained. And I'll describe in a subsequent video what that looks like. The second opportunity is something called fine-tuning. This is when you take these models and you fine-tune their weights on your own data, your own documents, the own, your own tasks that you're trying to perform, that kind of thing. So you fine-tune it um, uh, based on your own information. And then the last training opportunity is uh, what I call the prompt before the prompt. And what this is, is basically, it's almost just-in-time training. It's not really technically training because you're not changing the weights of the model, but you're taking what you want to accomplish and you're providing more information to the large language model, like instructions, like examples, like context, like hints, guidance, those kinds of things, uh, packaged up with the prompt as sort of just-in-time training for the model to respond, okay? So those are really the three big training opportunities. And if I could use an analogy, um, I think of it like a piano player, let's say. So pre-training is like you get a piano player that already knows how to do scales and already knows how to do all these exercises. You know, he or she may not know any songs, but they're great around the piano. They know their way around the keyboard, that kind of thing. Fine-tuning might be that you take this piano player uh, and you have them learn, you know, your band's style of music. So you have them learn jazz or rock and roll or whatever, classical or whatever it is. So they're diving into your, you know, specific kind of taste, your kind of keys, you know, key changes, style, pace, that kind of thing. Uh, so that might be the fine tuning exercise. And the prompt before the prompt is, is it's sort of like just before you go on stage, you say, hey, we're going to do this new song. It's an A. Uh, it's a fast song. It has three verses, two choruses. There's a solo for you in the middle. Um, you know, it's kind of a, I don't know, slow paced or fast paced. I don't know, something like that. So you kind of give that just-in-time guidance, and then you go out there and play the song. Uh, and because this piano player knows scales, knows your music, this just-in-time training kind of works, um, and it does the trick. So... You don't actually have to do all three. You'll always get a model that's pre-trained generally. Sometimes you want to fine-tune it. Sometimes you can skip that step. And generally speaking, you'll do some prompt before the prompt in order to get the model to perform. So those are really the three 
different kinds of training with Gen AI. So it's quite different from tabular machine learning, uh, but as we can see, it's quite effective. Thanks. Until next time.